Hello Tech Pros, episode 212. Do what you need to do to, to stay positive because every job and everything in life is a journey, right? Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people in communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Peter Malik. Happy Tuesday, Peter. Hey, Chad. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Are you ready? Uh, or are you ready? Are you prepared to be productive? I am prepared to be productive, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here, too. Awesome. Cool. Glad to have you. Peter Malik is a lifelong musician who's worked as a producer, recording engineer, songwriter, and guitarist. His credits range from Nora Jones to K-pop superstar Young Hua to blues legend John Lee Hooker. In 2013, he accepted a position with pro audio retailer Westlake Pro to help expand their online presence. And at the end of 2014, he was promoted to chief marketing officer of the company. Peter's diverse background includes a stint as a casino manager in Las Vegas, as well as 20 years of DIY marketing experience as a solo artist and music producer. So, Peter, I got to be completely brutally honest with you like all right in the in the music realm i am like one of the biggest i am the least uh likely to achieve <laughs> uh points when we're playing uh like a trivia game about music because i am the worst with music my contemporary for me stopped somewhere around 1984 and i just <laughs> stopped listening to the radio but you bring out john lee hooker and i'm like oh Amazing. I right. love it. I love John Lee Hooker. So Well, you, you're certainly boom, boom, not the and, worst, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, John Lee Hooker was an incredible, I mean, he was just an icon of American music and, uh, and a real pleasure to be around. He was a fascinating guy. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I love his his little scene he got. What did he get? About thirty or forty seconds in the movie The Blues Brothers. Absolutely. Yep. And, and that was that was fantastic to watch him play out there in the street and uh, just listening to his albums. They they're so gritty and and honest and real. And he's just got that amazing voice. I love it. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he's just so powerful to to listen just to listen to his voice is you know an instant chills. Yeah, good stuff. So today is Productivity Tuesday, Peter. And as it you is. know, we're all about being that pace setter, that trend setter, that get her done kind of folks um, that just want to have everything uh, checked off of our to-do list and uh, so that we can, we can do bigger, better things. But sometimes we find ourselves in this position where we're completely unproductive. So if you don't mind, could you share with us that personal time in your life or your business when you were unproductive, and then we'll see how you turned it around. Absolutely. Uh, I'll actually share two times. And one is in my early 20s. And I, you know, I became a guitar player and started working, you know, in nightclubs when I was 14 years old. And, uh, and, and guitar came really easy to me. And there was a time in my early 20s where I just really hit a wall, you know, and I just didn't, I just felt like, you know, you know, maybe I really, maybe this isn't my thing. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I'm really not as talented as I thought I was. And, you know, and honestly, I made horrible decisions. And uh, I went basically from hitting a wall in, in developing as a guitar player to becoming a blackjack dealer in downtown Las Vegas. And, uh, so, you know, so that, that one, it took me quite a while to break through. And uh, the second time was more recent, and it was shortly after I went to work for this company. I work for Westlake Pro right now. And uh, I'd come on um, just through a conversation. I'd been a customer of the president of the co company for uh, 10 years. And uh, and sort of, so, sort of accidentally happened to this job. And at any rate, I, I, went on, I came on as... Um, uh, to build an eBay store for them. And as I dug into the job, I realized that first of all, they needed marketing in a bad way. And secondly, that I'd sort of become a, a pretty decent marketer in 10, in 20 years of, you know, promoting myself. Sure. And so I started to take on, you know, responsibilities. And, you know, one of those responsibilities was, you know, building a 10,000, 
you know, product e-commerce store. And, you know, and I was, you know, taking on the responsibility of doing events for them in addition to, you know, building this eBay store. And I sort of reached a point where I was doing this alone and, and I would just realized, wow, I, you know, I am just overwhelmed. And, you know, at the time in talking to the owners of the company, they were like, no, was, these are all the resources we have. So, you know, do mm-hmm. what you're doing. And I sort of got to the point of so overwhelmed that, uh, that I was, you know, that I was doing nothing, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 and it was interesting. And to break through that, I mean, basically what I did was I sort of, I guess I kind of tricked my bosses and I, you know, I started to, um, uh, find, you know, outsourced help. Uh, I found a data entry person in India. I found a team of, of backend programmers in India to, <clears throat> to help with the project and, uh, eventually sort of wrangled my way into getting a, an, an in staff, you know, an in-house assistant. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. So you snuck past the hey, we don't have uh, we don't have yeah. budget to get the stuff done. Were were you paying for these um, for for these virtual assistants or these uh, consultants or contractors? Were you paying for these out of your own pocket, or were did were there's were there a little slush fund available in the? Uh, there there in the was com- a little slush fund available, yeah. and then when I actually got you know, I actually had sort of had to feign quitting in order to get you know help you know, in house. And basically I said, listen, you know, I, I have an idea here. I, I could go part time and the money you'd save with my two days that I'm not going to be there, we could hire an assistant. And, uh, and that's basically how I started to build a staff was, you know, essentially tricking my bosses. So that's very interesting. I love the concept of you can actually get you know, I hate to use a cliche, but do more with less, right? Do more, get more productivity done by spending less time working on it. And you, Peter, spending more of your time doing the big value, like really important stuff. And then the mundane, like things that you can outsource, like outsource that to somebody else and do that saved you like two days of work. No, that that's absolutely right. And, you know, the job that I took on as I sort of realized, oh, my God, what have I done here, you know, was actually, you know, uh, a multi-person, you know, uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 was, it was a multi-person job. There was no way that if I sat up and, and did this job 24 hours a day that it was going to get done. So I sort of had to figure out some hack, you know, to, to make it happen. I think a lot of folks are... Uh, are susceptible to this. I I am susceptible to this. My wife is huge. Uh, has this has this problem where uh, we see something and it's like oh that's no big deal. I can knock that out right. I can handle mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and sometimes it's like way overachieving, like way over committing to a problem there where it's more than just one person's amount of work. It's like a whole team of people. And when we tried to do it all ourselves, dude, how did that feel when you were completely overwhelmed with just like a team full of work to do, but you were the only person on the team? Yeah, you know, so I, I've actually listened to to your podcast quite a bit, and I know that you have suffered from a similar thing yourself, right? <laughs> right. I, I'm, I'm tempted to turn this around and start interviewing you because I think your your story is fascinating too. <laughs> Uh, cool. Thanks. We'll have to do that on a on a follow up interview. That yeah. that's that sounds like a lot of fun. So what what uh, what was the biggest impact to your job or to your health or to your just uh, man just keeping up with your day to day stuff when when you were under the gun and feeling all the pressure? Well, you know, I actually it definitely was impact to my health. You know, and I you know I was waking up at three in the morning. And, uh, you know, oh, my God, you know, this all this does have to be done. And so consequently, you know, I'd spend an hour and a half up worrying, which really doesn't help very much at all. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I've actually found that um, I have a meditation practice. And and I found that during that time, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't really taking care of myself as I should. And so that and that compounds the problem. And and that's and that's I think the main takeaway for me is no matter how tight your time is and uh, that you need to take time for yourself, you know. And for me, you know, actually doing medita- some sort of meditation practice on a daily basis really puts things in place and and becomes, 
you know, a driver of productivity. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I haven't started the meditation practices, but I can understand, I can completely empathize with, you know what, sometimes when we're the most stressed out, that's when we need to do our unstressing activities, whether it's meditation or in my case, you know, running, like long distance running yeah. or, or playing golf or whatever is the thing for you to to get to that unstressed period. But when we're the most stressed out, that's usually the time where we're like, okay, I don't have time to do all this unstressing work. I need to do more work. And it's like counterproductive. And we're like it, killing ourselves trying to get it all done. Yeah, absolutely counterproductive. And you know what? I mean, long distance running is a form of meditation, right? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, uh, it definitely frees up my mind. I, I listen to audiobooks on Audible, which, hey, uh, self-plug here. If you haven't already signed <laughs> up for Audible, you can do so by going to hellotechbook.com, get a free 30-day trial and a free book that you can keep forever. So go to hellotechbook.com. Just a shameless plug there. But <laughs> about your meditation, uh, Peter, what what is your practice? How do you um, de-stress so that you can come back and be more productive when you go, go back to work? Well, I actually, I, I studied this, um, there's this humanitarian, <clears throat> she's, she's an Indian um, humanitarian named Amma. And she's, uh, and if you check her out, it's Amma.org, A-M-M-A. She's done an amazing, incredible amount of good in the world. And she, you know, and she developed this particular meditation technique, which actually has, some starts out with like some sort of simple stretching moves and then moves into a, um, a particular uh, sequence that you go through internally. And, and it's fascinating because she, you know, the, the meditation itself is never t- sold. It's taught by people. I actually am a teacher too. Uh, it's taught for free. It's, and it's basically, you know, the idea is uh, for it to be a service, you know, for it to be, you know, um, a positive thing for people and it's, it's taught right now it's not only it's taught at Microsoft uh, it's taught in prisons it's taught in youth detention halls mm. and uh, and it's uh, yeah it's it, it's it's I just find it's not even a matter of you know what I need to do I just need to do it and then and the day is better for it awesome how how big of an impact does that make to your productivity when you see yourself like maybe going for a stretch when you're not going through your meditation practice and then when you come back and you get into your routine? It, enormous difference. It's it's like night and day. It's just, it just, it totally changes your life. Or for me, it totally changes my life. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to have to check that out. So that's amma.org, A-M-M-A.org. We'll have it linked up in the show notes page for this episode. Um, I want to go back to the the aspect of your job when you were outsourcing that. So mm-hmm. uh, I know a lot of people, myself included, have a hard time letting go of certain certain points, right? So I feel committed mm-hmm. to this. Like I have signed up for the seven day a week podcast, or you have signed up to be the builder of all the online stuff, right? The e commerce store on eBay and the everything yeah. else that's going on there, and it's a full person team uh, job, right? There's enough work for a lot of people on the team, but you're the solo. How hard was it to give up some of the things and say, hey, I need to find somebody else to do this work? I mean, you know, that's an interesting question because, you know, uh, in my head, I definitely tell myself like, hey, I I gotta, you know, delegate all this stuff. I don't want to deal with it. But, you know, I actually find that, that the mind is a sneaky thing, you know? And it's not so easy to give that stuff up. And, and, and I think that some of my challenge, you know, as developing as a manager first was, you know, to, to learn to let my people go, so to speak, you know, is to just let them do their thing and not, you know, and, and detach myself, at least in some way from the results at, you know, in order for them to, to learn the process and, and really, you know, attain key productivity too, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. So um, one key phrase that I want to pull out of, of the sentence you just said is you got to detach yourself from the results. So when I hear that, I think, okay, I am directly responsible for like the quote unquote perfection of getting this done, right? So all the 
the spelling is spelled correctly, but I can't spell, but I don't know why I picked this example, but you know, everything's spelled correctly. Everything's ordered. Everything's aligned. It's done to my specifications. It's just the way I like it. And nobody else can replicate my results. And I feel horrible for like giving that to someone else. And then I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to be looking over the shoulder. I'm going to be telling them how to do it. I'm going to be nitpicking everything. When in actuality, I just need to let them own that product, own that result, and then me hold them accountable to getting it done, but not necessarily like have to be in the day-to-day details. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And 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 frankly, let them fail if they're going to fail, hmm. right? Because that's really the only way that they're, I think, going to you know have have a passion for doing the job. If you know, if if I stay on them and, and you know, I'm constantly monitoring every move that they make. Uh, it's they're, they're not going to love their job. Is the you know, it's it's that simple, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it comes to the fact that how many times have we failed, right? How many times have I failed putting these show notes together, right? How many times have I failed <laughs> and jacked something up uh, on this podcast? Well, it I. <laughs> Other people can't fail as many times as I have, right? And I can teach them all of the uh, worst practices, right, that I have learned over the course of 200-something episodes of doing this now. Hey, here's here's all the mistakes that I've made. Try not yep. to ma- make these mistakes, but if you do, hey, I understand. <laughs> it's easy to happen. And now here's my checklist on uh, on how to do it going forward. Yeah, and you know what? I, I really believe in in this um, in the concept of an MVP, like a minimum value proposition. Mm-hmm. You know, is that <clears throat> is that the most important thing is shipping. The most important thing is getting stuff out there and, and keeping moving forward. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. We can iterate and 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 improve it. But you know, the the fact of just getting stuff done that's that's I think the prime directive. So, how do you go about really assigning that MVP to your new consultants when you're going out and finding uh, finding help, finding somebody else to take on, especially these small things where it's not, you know, giving them the whole product, but just giving them a piece of a product or a piece of the job? How do you define like an MVP with an outsourcer? Well, uh, that's that's a really interesting question. Um, I, I, I started using two main things. And one, when I was first building the website, there was an incredible amount. There's 10,000 products on this website. So there's an incredible amount of uh, data entry that needed to be done. And, you know, the, the CEO of the company was like, oh, we can do that in-house. And that, you know, resulted in two people literally running, screaming from the building, never to return. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. And, uh, and so I started looking around, you know, on some of the outsourcing sites and, and my second try, uh, I found a woman who, uh, I, you know, feel as a friend now. I mean, she's been working for us for about two and a half years and, uh, you know, about, uh, God, I guess eight months ago now had, her, had her first baby and, you know, and we sent a Westlake, you know, clothing package to, to the, to the baby, and at any rate, she just does an amazing job, and and it's just been a process of working with her, and 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 she obviously, right from the beginning, had a talent for for that particular job, and then I also have a, a team of of people who are who are basically handle various back end stuff, you know, um, who are who are based in Kolkata. And that's been interesting too. I mean, it's like uh, it's, it's two brothers and two other guys who are have become extended family also. And it's just been, you know, I think it was just a trial and error of trying to figure out, you know, what exactly where their talents lie and uh, and how I could best utilize them. And um, and it's you know it's it's sort of you know m- you know morphed into a very comfortable relationship where you know. I know exactly what I can rely on them for. And, and I can also know, you know, some of the things that I, sh- I should send that way. Yeah, that's, that's so awesome. Um, this new world that we live in, right? right? Everybody's connected. We're all dispersed across the globe and we all have our different motivations. We all have our different needs. But at, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about humanity and we can work with people 
um, you know, right next to each other, like a cube away, uh, a desk yep. away, an office away, an office building away, a city away, or halfway around the globe. And um, with today's technology, it's it's all the same, right? It's we're all working on this job together. We're all getting things done. And through the process of uh, every day or every week and, and throughout the months and years, we develop personal relationships with the people that we're working with, no matter what kind of culture they grew up in and and uh, you know what uh, what they're working on is they're they're amazing people. Yeah, you know it's fascinating, and and you mentioned a desk away or or half a world away, and sometimes I feel more connected and closer to that person half a world away hmm. than than somebody in the next next door office to me. Well, why does that happen? Why do you feel like um, in in a particular case you feel more connected with someone that works remotely versus someone who works in the same office with you? Oh, I think it's just you know it's just human beings, you know. Yeah. Um, is that, uh, you know, I try to promote a particular culture, at least in my department. And sometimes, you know, that culture that I view as, um, as optimal um, doesn't extend to all parts of the company. And so, you know, maybe some of the people that I end up, you know, rubbing the wrong way or, you know, like, who are not people that I would necessarily, you know, hang out with on a Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, are, are, are pretty physically close to me, but, um, you know, there, there are definitely a couple of people who are, you know, half a world away who I, you know, I hope to visit someday. I hope to take a trip to India in the next year. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great, uh, great excuse to, to make big plans to, to travel the world instead yeah. of just like, yeah, I would like to go visit. No, I want to go visit my friend and that's going to provide me the motivation to go make that happen. Peter, yeah. in just a moment, I want to talk about the process that you use to not just hire, but also manage um, the workers that are offsite and what you do with your time once you freed up two days a week um, by outsourcing. But first, we'll take a quick break and thank our sponsors. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Minio Cloud Storage. Minio is a cloud object storage server for developers and DevOps written in Go. The Go programming language is the emerging language of choice for modern cloud infrastructure projects, and it allows Minio to be highly concurrent and lightweight. Minio is Amazon S3 compatible, built with microstorage architecture in mind, but at its heart, Minio is simple, scalable, and supported by a passionate developer and user community. In episode 89 of Hello Tech Pros, I talked with A.B. Periasami, one of the founders of Minio, about the importance of community support and recruiting software developers who are as passionate about their product's code as artists are of their art. Check out that episode at hellotechpros.com slash 89 and check out Minio Cloud Storage at minio.io. That's M-I-N-I-O dot I-O. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high-quality, yet budget-friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, writers, and graphic artists, they can help you build your podcast from planning, post-production, and platform submission. Using only cutting-edge software and studio equipment, they're here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send them an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call them at 209 209- 505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. Okay, we're back with Peter Malik. Peter is a lifelong musician and a producer, recording engineer, songwriter, guitarist, and also a marketing officer in Westlake Pro. He's been in a lot of different situations where he was directly responsible for the output of the product and also on a team of people where the team didn't exist, he was a team of one, and he had to f find creative ways to come up with uh, adding additional team members onto the team. And so, Peter, I find it very, very interesting that you kind of snuck a little bit of the budget away and found someone to help you with, uh, with an outsourcing company. And then once you were able to kind of prove to your boss with this MVP, like this minimum viable outsourcer, minimum viable uh, product that uh, that somebody could work on that yeah maybe maybe it would help if we cut out forty percent really of my salary right and and cut yeah. out uh, 
uh, two days a week where instead of five days a week, I'm, I'm dropping down to three days a week. And then those other two days, you could pay for a whole team of people that don't have the salary requirements of right here in the US of A, right? So yeah. what, what were some of the sites that you used? Was it um, like what sites did you use to go out and find these workers? Uh, I, I believe people per hour is where I had the best luck. And it's not uh, to say that any of the others are, you know, uh, what else did I use? I think I may use, try to use Odesk. I tried to use a few of them, but mm-hmm. I think people per hour is the one that, um, that I had the most luck with. Although, you know, I seem to find there's a lot of the same people on, on many of the sites. Right. So what, what was the process that you used to like create the, um, job description and to vet out the people when they applied for the job? Well, you know, I found that posting a job, um, you, you were overwhelmed, you know, with the responses. And so, you know, basically I just, I just dug into the sites and I found people who, you know, it appeared as if they might be good prospects and I would hire them for a small job and see what happens. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating because, uh, you know, I mean, I, I had one job where I think, um, uh, I think the person I hired like uh, in- injected a virus into a, a hosting site that you know that the company luckily wasn't using. Oh wow! Um, is that yeah? But at the and then at the same time, you know, there were people who would start to do work really well and sort of trail off, and you know, they just didn't seem to be that motivated. And uh, and but I ended up finding this one team that, and I'll tell I'll tell you the, the experience that. That uh, that really, you know, made me realize that these are people that I want to have a better relationship with. Is um, you know, when we started the site, um, I really didn't have uh, a really a, a strong knowledge of like what I needed as far as hosting goes for this huge e-commerce site that we were mm-hmm. building. And so we went through a couple of different hosting companies, and I was on the second one, and the site totally went down. And I got on with, you know, with their tech team and they elevated it and they elevated it and they elevated it. 24 hours later, they couldn't figure out, you know, what the problem is, what, you know, what had gone wrong to take the site down. And, uh, and it was like probably three in the morning in India. And, and, uh, and this one guy, his name is Vinay, um, sort of pinged me on Skype. It's like, hey, is everything okay? I was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, it's not okay. And uh, I told him what happened. He says, yeah, let me check it out. And five minutes later, the site was up. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and so at any rate, I, I, at, at that moment, I thought, all right, I've got the right guy. Yeah, that's amazing how just a fresh pair of eyes uh, yep. looking at the situation from from a unique perspective and uh, whatever experience that Vinay had, he's like, oh, that's an easy thing. Everybody else is like, this is hard. We can't solve yeah, it. We don't know why. Vinay's like, oh, yeah, just like you want to flip the switch. You want to you yeah. do this thing or whatever it was. That's and awesome. as you might guess, I, I am not a programmer. And I wish I were. I wish I could go back in time a little bit, but but I'm not. Yeah, it's okay. You have yeah. skill sets that uh, developers don't have, and and some developers may have some skill sets. So it's all about working together as a team. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah, cool. So once you once you found Vinay and once you found uh, some of the other people and started working with them, um, okay. So you went out to people for an hour. You went out to Odesk instead of um, posting a a job. Uh, request and then weeding through all of the resumes, you really just kind of looked around at the different profiles of people and said, "Hey, this Vinay looks very interesting. Looks like a, a sharpshooter here. Uh, I'm going to give you a sample job. I'm going to give you a small job that you can take on, and then kind of judge your results and see what happens." So, how did you go about like finding something that was small enough where if it got done or didn't get done, it wouldn't like you know, tank your day, right? But it was big yeah. enough to really judge uh, is Vinay uh, the kind of worker that we want to hire? Well, I mean, with the with the data entry people, that was pretty straight ahead. It's cool. like we'd, yeah. I'd give them like a product line and say, listen, I need this done in a certain way. Ask me questions and we'll see what happens. Uh, with the, the back end of the site, it was a little bit more difficult because I was certainly learning as, as, I, as I went. 
And I actually don't remember exactly. Well, you know, you know what it was? I I'd actually um, uh, would run into a particular small problem and, uh, and just throw it to them, throw it to somebody and see what happens, see what mm -hmm. they came up with. Cool. So once um, once you talked to your your management team about this and really started, they bought into it. Um, mm -hmm. What happened next? Did they actually let you drop down to three days a week, or did they say, "Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea, but we'll keep you on it at, at full time, and we'll just use that uh, forty percent of your paycheck in addition to what we're paying you and uh, and hire people"? So, did you actually get to drop down to three days a week? I actually, and you know, in retrospect, they told me that they were thinking, "Like, uh, God, we got to get rid of this guy because this isn't working out." <laughs> and, <laughs> and and. Uh, but I did. They did let me drop down to three days a week. I got an in-house assistant, um, and you know it's, it was really interesting because I think that the CEO, who's um, a fascinating guy, and in very, very, you know, uh, when I came on, very old school, you know, the the uh, our business is is brick and mortar, and we sell pro audio gear and post production equipment and so forth to to basically uh, the who's who's list of of LA, you know, we have enterprise clients like Universal and NBC and Fox and, and, you know, uh, you know, who's, who's list of music producers and, and recording artists. And, and at any rate, he, he, I think, um, uh, you know, like in his head said, Oh yeah, we got to do, start doing this online thing. But in his heart, he was very much an old school, you know, get on the phone and sell this stuff. And, you know, after I went three days, I, I um, and I had this assistant. We were producing more stuff, and after uh, I think a couple months, uh, I came back to them and said, "Like, listen, yeah, we're we're getting more done, but this we're still really kind of falling behind. I need mm -hmm. to come back on full time." And uh, and they went for it, and there's a and you know and fast forward to today and that, and right around then is where where they uh, promote, you know I was the director of marketing and right around then they promoted me to chief marketing officer and um, and there was a shift that happened shortly after where they they really sort of became invested in this idea of you know creating we, we create a lot of uh, 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 video content we create a lot of uh, different you know like valuable media uh, for you know, for our pro audio world, and um, and they became invested in actually putting together a team. And right now, I have uh, three people. So this is four people department in house, in addition to the outsourced, and we're kind of kicking butt. That's amazing. I love that story because. You were very proactive in this sense. I think a lot of people that I've talked to, and even the past Chad, and uh, Chad in, in the past <laughs> from now, right? I look back on my personal situations and my attitude at those times were very much a victim, right? Oh my yeah. gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I have so much to do and I can't get it done. I feel like crap. Maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should give up. Uh, yeah. There's no hope for me, right? But what I see from yours is very motivational. I think we could have done this for a Motivation Monday or a Productivity Tuesday, either way, right. because it's awesome. <laughs> um, is you were very proactive about your circumstance and you said, hey, I I literally can't get it all done myself. There needs to be other people. Can I get other people? They said, no. And you said, okay, well, how can I get other people still? Even though you said, no, I'm going to risk oh, yeah. everything and I'm going to go out and get it. And then once I got it, now I'm going to prove to you that this is worth it. Now I'm going to ask permission to drop down to three days a week and use that budget. And you did it and you were able to get down to just a part-time job. And then when you were ready to come back and do it full-time, you said, hey, I want to do that. And you got it done, but got it done with a promotion and built up an entire empire inside the company and doing a lot of amazing, as you said, kick butt things. And to me, that all comes down to the productivity that you implemented was based on your proactivity of like deciding to make a difference and deciding to make a change regardless of what the outcome was, right? Because the, the company could have said no, like you can either walk away and, and we'll hire somebody else or you can keep doing what you're doing, but we're not going to go for this. And you like you convinced them and, and it started with you just having that conversation and be brave enough to go go forward with it. 
Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, I definitely, I hear what you're saying. I, I definitely had those moments of like, oh, woe is me, and this is horrible, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but I opted to, to to try to walk towards the light, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, at times, it, it was fascinating because at times it felt like I wasn't moving the needle at all. I mean, basically, I needed to move the needle <clears throat> of the perception of our CEO and is actually two partners as a CEO and president. And I, and I needed to, to, you know, like, you know, uh, I guess, you know, make them realize the value that, that, that really fully embracing this marketing agenda would bring to the company. And at times I felt that that wasn't happening, but then I started to see glimpses of, yes, it was. And, you know, and that energized me more. Fantastic. Love it. Great story, Peter. If you have any final words of wisdom for our audience about productivity or about music industry or whatever else you want to share, please share that. And then the final words of wisdom is what you're going to share. And then after that, the best way that we can connect with you. And then we'll say goodbye. Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, I, I think the bottom line is, as you, you know, too, is don't give up you know, and, mm -hmm. and do what you need to do to, to stay positive. And because, you know, every job and everything in life is a journey, right? And, and it, you know, the thing that I've found is that when I make a plan and I go towards something that, you know, the result may be totally different from the what from what I thought I was trying to achieve, but pretty much universally, the result is a good thing. It's it's sometimes really unexpected. And, uh, and shocking, but you know, and the bottom line is, it's it's a good thing. It's you know, it's it moves us forward in one way or another. If that makes sense, that does. And uh, yeah, you can find me. I'm at Silvertone on uh, Twitter. So it was basically started as you know, I was a a musician. You know, that's my Twitter account. Uh, you can find me, um, Peter Malik, at LinkedIn. And there's a petermallet.com, which talks more st mostly about music production and has not been updated in a little while, but I'm, I'm hoping to find the time to maybe update it with my current life. <laughs> awesome. Peter, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really value this conversation about walking towards the light or running towards the light because sometimes we live in a dark place and, and the darkest places that I've ever been are in my own mind, in my own head, and in my own heart where I feel like uh, nothing can be done. But this is a great example of, yes, things can be done. You got to get a little creative and you, got bra you have to be brave enough to walk towards it. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Uh, thank you so much for having me on, Chad. And, and I really, I enjoy the podcast. I listen to it all the time. Awesome. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Tech yeah, Pros, if you, if you have a situation at work, whether you work for yourself or you work for somebody else, let's, let's say you work for somebody else. If you're working for somebody else and you feel completely overwhelmed and like your productivity doesn't matter, like the amount of hours you put into the job is not really affecting the outcome at the end of the day, meaning it's not really helping the company. You're just trying to stay on top of the to-do list. I would say really break that down into what are the most important things for the revenue or for the health and safety or, or whatever the, the key measures are that the company is looking at, right? What's the key measures that the company is looking at? And what are the top two or three things on your to-do list that's a mile long that needs to be taken serious effort and to do that? And really just start focus on it and just throw all the, all the other crap away. Or if it needs to be done just to check it off a list, outsource it find somebody else to do it and that may have to be a situation where you're kind of you know looking for creative ways to do that like peter did um and then have an honest conversation with your management team about you know what this is if you want quality then this is the amount of stuff that we can get done with just me or just this team if you want quantity then you really need to just outsource it to somebody else to just crank away and uh, find a good balance that works for you You've been listening to Peter Malik, and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 212. Do you use Slack for team communication? 
Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash slack. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Productivity Tuesday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I are talking about leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people in communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. Sunday, being unplugged. Monday, motivation. And then we do it all over again next Tuesday for productivity. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.